Good morning, this is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine and it's Fresh Friday. <laughs> My overalls are a little off kilter, okay. It's funny what happens when you press record. Anyway, today I wanna talk about a misconception and brace yourself. Today I'm gonna really be pushing hard on some things, but what we see promoted so often is God's love is unconditional, God's love is unconditional. And I think we need to describe and define conditional and unconditional and what real love is. Because what happens sometimes and what is being understood and promoted is this idea that God loves me unconditionally. Therefore, it doesn't matter how I live, what I do, what I believe. None of those things matter because God's love is unconditional and he's always going to love me no matter what. And we need to understand there's a difference between God's love, which is unconditional for while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, by the way, that's a condition. If you believe in him, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That means by default that those who do not believe in him will actually perish. That's conditional. And so while his love is for us and he desires us and he sent his son for us so that we would be in relationship with him, his acceptance of us is very conditional. And so that's what I want to kind of crack open today. And I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, what is she talking about? So God's love is, is unconditional, but his acceptance of us is very conditional, which means you are not accepted by God. You are not in right standing if you are not in Christ. That is how we have proper relationship. No one comes under the Father except through Jesus. When we are in Christ, we are accepted. But if you are not, Scripture tells us you're an enemy of God. We are far from him when we are not in Christ, but he loves us to the point that he sent his son so that salvation and right standing with God and right relationship with God is now possible. I have my Bible here. So good, but we need to understand that God's love, unconditional, and I'm going to define what God's love looks like because it looks different. Right now, we think if you love me, you have to accept what I'm doing. You have to accept my beliefs, and that's love. That, that's not true. We'll get there. But his acceptance of us is very conditional. We have to be in Christ to be accepted by God. And then once we're in Christ, we're called to be holy as he is holy. And so then not only are we positionally accepted, but we are then growing in the likeness of Jesus, which means we're called higher. And so we don't just live any way that we want. And here's an example in scripture that I can show you, Romans 6. What then shall we say? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? It goes on to talk about how we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And so we are accepted in Christ and then called to walk in an acceptable way by God's standard through the power of the Holy Spirit and through that conviction and that renewal, the newness of life. That goes on. Let's take a look. At another scripture, Romans 8, this is a really well-known one, 37. No, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If you want to know what all those things are, just back up, but we're doing something specific today. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Where? The love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. <laughs> we have to be in Christ. That is where we are not separated from the love of God, is to be in Christ. This love is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate us because we are in Christ. When God looks at us, he sees Jesus. And then I'm thinking over in 1 John, flip with me if you will. There's so many good things here. Oh my gosh, and, and Peter, the, the Peter's epistle is amazing. But let's just look for just a brief second in 1 John. 
the, verse five, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Okay, so we have to understand that there's this way of walking in God. And even though it, we're not sinless, the idea is that we are now accepted in Christ and then we live an acceptable life. We take on what God has said is good and what God has said is bad. We take on his moral standard. So life is in Christ. In John 15, we, well, let's just jump over there real quick. So we jump over to John 15 and Jesus talks about in verse six, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. There's a condition there. If you don't abide in him, you are thrown away. The branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, do you see the condition there? There is a conditional part of this. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Condition. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Do you see the tension there? When we just go around saying, God loves you unconditionally. God loves you unconditionally. Yes, to an extent. Because he generally loved the whole world enough to send his son to bring them into right relationship. That's a condition though. That acceptance is based on our acceptance of Jesus's sacrifice. If we don't have that acceptance, then we are not acceptable to God. I know it's so good. So we have to read our Bibles and not just say churchy Christian things. It's such a, it's just so out there right now and I'm seeing it all the time. And, and I just believe so strongly that it's leading people into this idea that God receives me exactly the way that I am. And the reality is you need a savior. You need Jesus and because you can't be accepted the way you are. But while you are still a sinner, the worst of the worst, Christ died for you. But you have to accept this salvation. You have to accept this way of being accepted or you are not accepted. And yes, God loves you, but his acceptance of you is conditional on you accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. Whew. So can God love you and not be okay with you? Yes, God, I can love someone, believe it or not, in our culture, this is not taught or understood, but I can love you and not agree with everything you think. And you can love me and not agree with everything I think or everything I do. And the same for you. We have confused love with I accept what you're doing. And that is a lie from the enemy. It doesn't mean I don't love you if I think what you're doing is sinful based on the word of God. Based on what God's standard is, I can determine through his word that this is wrong. It doesn't mean I don't love you and it actually means I do love you to tell you that it's wrong. In the same way that someone could call me out on my stuff and people have in the past and that has saved me from myself. If you love me, you'll accept my identity. If you love me, you'll accept what I'm choosing to do, whatever that would look like. But God's love is not the same as his approval. So God can love you and not approve what you are doing. And if you are in this world, God loves you, but that love requires a response, a big one, and that is called repentance. You repent from your ways and receive his ways. I can love you completely and disagree with you or what you believe in. When we tell people that God loves them, we need to define love because it is not defined accurately in our culture. We are sending the wrong message, I fear. God defines love and he defines truth and he defines freedom and it is never with deception or bondage. Real love does not promote deceptive practices, things that are leading to bondage, things that are not in God's word or lies. That is not real love. And yet what our culture is telling us is that's exactly what love is. And nothing could be further from God's truth and the truth because he is absolute truth. And so I wanted to just throw this little fire message at you. Ponder it, think about it, and think about how you phrase things. God loves you unconditionally. So will you receive his condition to be accepted? 
and received into his family because no one comes under the Father except through Jesus Christ. There is a conditional part there and your response is needed. Much love. Have fun with that one.